we have now finished 16.1, which was basics of investing. And we covered things like why it's important to invest, to beat inflation, and to build wealth, and for fun and a challenge. And we talked about diversification and investing risk and and the rule of 72 and some really important basics. But now we're going to get into talking about investment choices and we're going to list and describe sources of information so we can make good choices and then we're also going to describe some choices and rate them based on risk. Before I go further um, in that though I would like to just show you the canvas page real quick so that you can pull up this. It says study the savings and investments options note sheet while watching the video. So on this second part, this is the savings and investing for the future and it has based on return, savings accounts, CDs, money markets, government bonds, and then in the medium risk, mutual funds, real estate, and high risk stock, penny stocks, collectibles. And it summarizes kind of your advantages and disadvantages so I would highly recommend that you have that out when I'm talking through the slides and maybe just take notes on that if you can print it off that would be great and then it also has must-see types of investment tutorials these things are all really short videos uh, and again, it's all those same things certificate of deposits government bonds stocks mutual funds it's all the types of investments that are out there, and they're typically Investopedia videos, and they are absolutely fantastic. So hit those links, watch those if you're wondering what is a bond. I don't even know what that is. So this stuff I think is really interesting, really crucial to the foundation of you understanding what you need to know about investments and making the right investment choices. So with that said, let's go ahead and go through the sources of financial information. So the first source that you could use to get financial information so that you can make a good choice is investor services and newsletters. So these include things like Moody's and Standard and & Poor's. And you're going to see that all of these that I'm going to put up there are all either print things, they're online things, or they're advisors, people that can help you. So all information is available either in writing, online, or through people that you would need. So the second one up here is financial magazines, and there are a ton of these. I mean, Forbes, Kiplinger's, um, Money Magazine, there's so many of them, it's unbelievable. So if you want to read more about different types of investments and information, you can go there. Brokers, so online brokers, E-Trade, um, as well as physical buildings with people like uh, Merrill Lynch, um, <coughs> Edward Jones, I use Northwestern Mutual. So there's just an absolute ton of brokers out there too. Then there's financial advisors. These guys are people that are certified, just like I'm a certified public accountant. So I go through testing and get certified so that I'm um, highly knowledgeable and an expert in accounting matters. You also have that for financial advisors as well. So they go through a litany of exams and tests to become certified. So you want to use those kind of people if you can. Then annual reports, we're going to do another slide on this one in a second, but the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, um, requires public companies issue annual reports, and it talks about kind of what currently happened this year for them financially, as well as what they're expecting to happen out in the future. And again, we'll do another slide on that. Then there are un online investor education things. Uh, one of them that I would highly recommend that you guys do look at is Teen Investor, T-E-E-N-V-E-S-T-E-R, um, for people your age and what to do investing. And then there's 
Motley Fool, and there's a ton of different education things available out there. And then newspapers, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, all of them tend to have financial information in them. So let's talk more specifically about annual reports because that is something that you need to understand if you're going to be getting involved in buying company stocks or bonds or things like that. So I might have already said some of this, but an annual report is a summary of the corporation's financial results for the year and its prospects for the future. The SEC requires all public companies prepare this each year and send it to their stockholders or make it available to their stockholders. Then that investor, stockholder, potential investor, can use the information in the report to evaluate whether or not um, it's a company that they want to invest in or not. And you can get um, annual reports off of a website they're online at the SEC website. It's sec.gov, and you can go in there and do an online search by company and pull up all sorts of annual reports and other documents that help you evaluate them financially. You can also obviously go to their company website, and they will have places there for stockholder relations and sharing financial information with you. And you can go to your libraries and get some information as well. So now we're going to start to go into the investment choices. And again, I would pull out that summary that has advantages, disadvantages, and things like that for you. So we have lots and lots and lots of choices in investments. And I'm going to make those choices or group those choices based on risk return. And we said the cardinal rule of investing, low risk, low returns high risk, high returns, middle, medium risk, medium returns. So it goes hand in hand. The more risk I take on, the more likelihood I'll have a high return. So we are making choices based on risk and return. And these are our three categories that we're going to go into. So the first one is the low risk, low return category. So corporate and municipal bonds is the first type of investment, a bond, but it's a corporate or a municipal bond. And I do have videos on that. So a bond is a debt obligation of the corporation or the state or local government, and it's used for them to do things. So when we built our school, what we're doing right now with the renovations and the construction, the city of Westfield issued bonds to investors, which was basically them borrowing money from investors. And on a bond, you promise then, the city of Westfield promises to pay back the amount they borrowed to the investor, as well as pay them interest over the life of the bond. So that's what a corporate municipal bond is. These are usually really safe investments because they're backed by government entities that don't tend to miss payments or really strong corporations, stable corporations, so it's a pretty safe investment. Then there are U.S. government savings bonds, and this is the U.S. government borrowing from investors and paying them back similar to this, so not state and local, but just U.S. based, and the U.S. has never ever defaulted on a payment, so it is about as safe as you can get because it's backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. And then there are treasury securities, and there's three different types of them. Um, they are basically other types of safe investments like the savings bond backed by the U.S. government, um, their income or their interest that they pay out on these types of investments are subject to federal income taxes, so I have to pay taxes on any of that income I get as an investor, but they're not subject to state or um, local income tax, which makes them kind of a nice investment as well. Then we have medium risk, medium return. 
and the first one there is stock and there's a video on this again stock is a unit of ownership in a corporation um, this is what most people think of when they're thinking about investing um, and there's lots of different types of stocks that you can invest in they have a potential for high growth and they offer dividends but they could decrease in value as well and then there's mutual funds and mutual funds are where people pool money together in a fund to buy a large selection of security so i may only have 50 bucks to invest so i can't choose many different types of investments with only 50 dollars but if you have $50 and the next person has 50 and we all put it together, then we have $5,000 that we can invest. We can go buy different uh, types of security. So mutual funds is kind of a starting point for a lot of people to start investing because it's easy to get in even with a little amount of money. Then there are annuities. And it tells you there what an annuity is. I do not have a video on this one. This one's kind of complex or more difficult in my mind um, but it's a contract you make a lump sum payment or a series of payments on a regular basis and they earn interest in return um, typically when I retire so I'll start to draw money out on a continuous basis or an annuity basis and then real estate medium risk medium return uh, but if you look at that sheet I gave you a lot of those were considered high risk as well like the stock but real estate is just going and buying land or buildings and investing in those and getting the return from rent rent in the buildings and things like that and then lastly we have high risk high return and those are futures options penny stocks and collectibles and i am literally not going to talk about these these are um, far and away difficult complex things that a high school student um, doesn't need to know and honestly there are very few people that invest in these things even when they're sophisticated or knowledgeable because they are so risky and not that many people have um, the tolerance for that much risk so i'm not going to go into those so to wrap up this section, what I would say is make sure that you spend some time uh, going into those videos that I have put together, the tutorial videos that will explain all these things in detail. There's something here called an exchange traded fund, which is similar to a mutual fund, um, but they're becoming a lot more common in what a lot of people are investing in. So. Uh, I would say that every single one of these on here, with the exception of real estate, is something that probably most people will invest in in their life and need to understand what they are. So make sure you take a look at those. And again, these were just explaining based on low risk, low returns, what different options are out there and what's good and bad about them. So make sure you kind of use that if you have some interest. And then I would highly recommend if you enjoy this stuff or are interested, you get on YouTube and you just put in the search Investopedia uh, videos and it'll come up with explaining everything to you. I mean, dividends, yields, the types of investments. There's so many good videos out there on it that explain it in layman's terms, which is really fantastic. So if you get a chance to do that, make sure that you do.